Hello, Tint Wisdom family. Welcome to Tint Wisdom number 43. Um, if this is your first time watching, my name is Eric. And so this is the first solo Tint Wisdom in quite a while. Um, this is number 43. And I just looked back on my on Tint Wisdom's YouTube channel and saw that the last time I was doing one of these without a guest was actually Tint Wisdom 29. So it's about a month or so ago. So I'm excited for today. Um, the idea behind today's wisdom is going to be basically an ask me anything. So any questions, go ahead and, you know, type them in the comments. Absolutely anything. Um, you know, that's what it is. It's an ask me anything. So we'll do that. And then I have some things that I prepared that I wanted to talk about today. Some of those things I hinted in yesterday's video that, you know, I feel like are just super important for everybody. So I'm going to pull up the comments, make sure. Give everybody a second to get in here. Anybody who feels like sharing this, always a great way to get others in here that maybe don't realize we're live. And then um, while I'm pulling this up, I also want to mention we're using a new streaming software. So really trying to improve the quality of these live streams and you know the video, the audio. So um, interested in any feedback in today's live stream. So we can jump right in actually with a couple quotes that I wanted to mention, and these kind of feed into today's topic. So two quotes by the same person. And the first quote is, your choices define you. Don't let fear be the definition. And the other is, don't let joy be an accident. Create it. So read them again a little slower. Your choices define you. Don't let fear be the definition. So, you know, I feel like fear can be replaced with anything, but the idea is taking control and, you know, don't let joy be an accident, create it. And it's, they're basically the same quote, the way I interpret them. Um, hey, Logan, uh, from Louisiana. So part of the new live stream program I'm using, I actually get to see the comments on the screen in front of me. So it makes it a little easier for me to monitor comments, answer questions. So yeah, I'll be able to get to the questions faster. So thanks for joining everybody. So anyway, the point of these quotes are taking control, and that's going to be kind of a topic of today's live stream. Before I jump into that, I want to mention a couple things with TintWiz that, you know, are commonly asked that I feel like everybody should just maybe we'll take a second to talk about and answer any questions regarding. The first is importing and exporting contacts in and out of TintWiz. So there is an import and an export feature. You can export your contacts and all your contacts information at any point, or you can import from any other source that you uh, maybe have contacts in. You can export them from there and import them into TintWiz. So it's a very easy, seamless process. Um, you can do it directly from the app on the desktop version. So just go to tintwiz.com and go to your contacts, and you're going to see an import and export feature with instructions there. And there's also a full write up about it in the help center. Now, we also can assist in any, you know, uh, any way possible. So if you need help exporting from where you're currently at, your data is currently being stored or importing into TintWiz, what you do is just go into the app, go to the support section, hit the live chat, and we will completely take care of it for you in any way we possibly can. So it's kind of a hands-off thing if you want it to be, or you can do it yourself. And it just takes a few minutes of organizing your file and uploading it in there or exporting it out and using it for any sort of marketing purposes. If you want to send out a mass email, if you want to do retargeting on Facebook or on Google, exporting your contacts is basically how you get that list to create either your target audience or a lookalike audience similar to your contacts. So um, if there's any questions about that, we can, you know, glad to answer any specifics on how to do lookalike audiences and how to do those target audiences, or we can dedicate a whole video to it. So <clears throat> the other thing with TintWiz is the contact forms or the lead forms. So you see in the menu, what's up, Vinny? Thanks for joining. So if you look on the menu in the app, you're going to see lead forms. Lead forms are one of those things that they take a couple minutes to set up and they pay you back forever. It's it's truly one of the features that it does it for you. There's nothing that you need to do other than that initial setup. So lead form setup is basically the lead forms are going to replace your contact forms on your website 
or you can also insert additional contact forms throughout pages on your website. For example, if you do blog posts, um, do you have a lead form on your home page? Do you have them on your individual services? So you might have a lead form on your contact page, but if you go to your like residential page, your automotive page, maybe a, like a page about specific brand of window film, having a contact form on those pages will increase your conversion as well from your website visitors. So lead forms are basically very easy to create contact forms that you can embed on your website and you can put them anywhere, you can customize them, and basically the idea is as you put them, put them throughout your website, you're going to start to gather more leads from your website because people are going to put their information in there. That information automatically goes in TintWiz. You get an app notification. You're able to contact the customer within seconds of getting that. You don't have to copy and paste their information. There's no transfer of information. There's no checking your emails later. So lead forms are one of those things that they're worth taking the time to do, and it's another thing that we can completely take off your hands for you what you'll want to do is just go into the support area, go to the live chat, and we can pretty much take it from there. We'll ask you some questions and we can set up based on best practices, where those lead forms should go, what those lead forms should contain, and you know where you're going to get the, um, how you know, you're going to get the best conversions out of there. And then of course, the efficiency of having your leads all in one place. So Billy, thanks for joining. Billy asks, so TintWiz can be integrated into my site. So yes, that's exactly what you just said, that's the lead form section. That lead form section, you can create lead forms that replace your contact form and also go through, um, you can place them anywhere on the website. So the idea is, you know, any page where customers are getting, you know, going to, it will benefit you from having a lead form. So an example will be um, like, like a blog post. Um, you can put it like on the sidebar in the blog post or at the end of the blog post. Same thing with any like landing page, like your residential, your commercial, your homepage. You know, as people are reading, you can go ahead and put that contact form, a simple one, like a name, email, phone, and notes, small contact form. It's basically spam free. There's no CAPTCHA code or any puzzles for your visitors to figure out. And you're not gonna get spam coming through that with some very rare exceptions where people just type it in manually. But it's a really, you know, high class system that, integrates with your website, it'll increase your conversions. And you know, it's just as you're getting a notification that a lead came in, you can now see when it came in, where it came in from, you see the stats of that, and you can contact them by just clicking that phone number, or clicking that email address, text messaging, calling, whatever you're gonna do in seconds. And the, the response you're gonna get from the customer is, wow, that was quick. And you can say, yeah, that's the kind of customer service we provide, how can I help you? And you're immediately setting the tone for how this is going to go, what type of company you are, and the expectations that they're going to have of your company's customer service. And again, it's better than checking your email at the end of the day. It's better than copying, pasting. It's better than, you know, if you check your email, you find a lead, you go to call somebody, and then what happens if you don't get in touch with them? Where do you put those notes? How do you know to contact them again? You know, you keep the maybe the email marked as new, but is that really a, a system? You know what I mean? This is a way that you can get your leads all in one place. So when a lead comes in, you're going to see it right on your dashboard as a new lead. You're also going to get a notification. You'll see it in your notification bell area. But the idea is in the new lead area, it's on the upper left of the app, you're going to see a little number of how many new leads you have. And at any point, you can click through them and you can call them. And basically, a new lead is a lead that was put in, whether you put it in or it came in from a lead form that doesn't have a project yet. So it's just a new lead. Now you can leave new leads there, continue to call them and contact them um, to, you know, make a, make a, uh, make a sale schedule project and so on. And then at some point you're either going to create a project for them and then they come out of the new leads and they become a project for you to continue with. Or if it's a dead lead, if they tell you they're no longer interested or whatnot, you can hit dismiss from leads. And what that does is that keeps all your potential customers in one pool for you to go fishing whenever you want. And again, this kind of ties into today's topic because let me paint a picture and then we'll kind of revisit this a little bit later on the Tint Wisdom in today's topic. But painting a picture, you're at Starbucks, you're in line, you have a few minutes. What do you do? You probably open Instagram or Facebook and you start scrolling, right? You're like, I have three or four minutes. I can go ahead and... Uh, read some shit on Facebook or, you know, not in a bad way, but just some, some stuff, whatever comes your way, that's what you're doing. And I mean, maybe you're checking emails, maybe you're doing 
who knows what you're doing, but I'm betting it's going to be social media related more times out of not. And I'm only saying that because I know from my personal experience and the people that are around me, that is exactly what I do. The second I have a few minutes, if I'm waiting for somebody, the first thing I do is I'll pull out Facebook or Instagram and I start scrolling. I might pull up the news and I start scrolling. And what this lead form and lead feature allows you to do in TintWiz is instead of just starting to scroll, sometimes hit the TintWiz app and go to your new leads and look through them and start text messaging and send them, hey, is this a good time to chat? Would you, uh, do you, did you get your car tinted yet? Uh, we have availability this Saturday. Would you like us to come in or would you like to come in? Would you like to schedule something? Um, you know, whatever follow up it is, having everything in your phone at the touch of a button allows you to kind of shift your free moments into doing things that you may feel like you don't have time for. And really you do have time, just you have to fit that time in the spots you have time. So you have to make those tasks something that you can do in those time periods and you're setting yourself up for success. So once again, that's the lead forms. I think it's like, it's, it's just one of my favorite features because it's one of those one-time setup and it pays you back forever. You'll be in love with it. And I guarantee you'll never in a million years want to do any Thing else, but use those lead forms on websites. You can also link them to social media. It's a great way to gather leads and do it. Because if once you do it, you see the value. And if getting it set up is something you don't feel you have time for, I'll take the excuse this time, jump into the support. We can take care of it for you and you're off and running. Anything we can do to help, we're there to help. And support is the last thing I wanted to talk about today about TintWiz before we jump into today's topic. The support area on the site, it is what I want to publicly say is the best support you're going to get on any app, on any service. I, I mean, I find service, customer service to be of the utmost importance. I feel like we're in an age where as consumers, we deserve it. It's far, finally our time. And the companies that are able to you know, go up and beyond as far as service goes, helping answer questions, solving problems, doing whatever it takes to, you know, help the customer. Those are, those are going to be the companies who succeed. That became a whole category of value that you're now able to provide your customers, um, both as a tint company to your customers. And then I look at it as from TintWiz to tint companies. We, you know, it's customer service all around, whether you're buying from your manufacturer, whether it's an app you're using, whether it's the customer service you're providing to a customer, whether it's the gas station you're pumping gas at, you know, customer service is something that I feel like everybody's looking for more and more. It's a place to add value. And it's a place that we feel very, very strongly about. So what I'm saying is use the customer support live chat it's the absolute best way for us to be able to answer your questions efficiently and quickly and accurately and make sure that we're able to follow up with you. We're able to you know, make it an easy and simple solution. So we're there for you to help in any way possible, um, almost 24 hours. We have users across the world. We have users in Australia, in the UK. So those are time zones that we have to be available for our users. So we're in support almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So, you know, you, you can feel like you have somebody there ready to answer your questions when you use the live chat in the tent, in TintWiz. So it's there. It's, again, one of the best features. You can ask any questions that you have, and we're glad to help answer them. So, Billy, what's up? David, Tyson, <clears throat> thank you all for watching on this Tint Wisdom Tuesday. Um, I think we can jump in today's topic. So leading in today's topic, I wanted to talk about Patrick from Window Tinting Business, the YouTube channel. We put up a post about it earlier this week. And basically Patrick, he's a tinter. He's also a YouTube celebrity in the tint community, over 12,500 subscribers, really, really sincerely awesome guy, a natural teacher and one of those people that you can tell just, you know, he learned a trade and he wanted to push. He wants to keep learning and he's constantly pushing the envelope in that, both in the dry shrink prep that he created and now this new YouTube series that he's doing within his channel. And what he's doing is he's documenting the process of starting his own window tinting business. So he currently tints for another company. He works for another company as an employee and it's a great company. It's a company that's been in business, I think about 13, 15 years or so, if not more. Um, the owner's been in the industry probably 20 to 30 years and it's just a great company. It's top 10 in the country. And, you know, I, I've never heard him say anything but positive uh, praise about the company he works for, but 
Patrick pushing the envelope as he does. He is, you know, taking taking another step forward and starting his own tent company. And then not only starting his own tent company, but he's publicly documenting it and sharing it with everybody on his YouTube channel. So he's currently five episodes in. Tonight's going to be the sixth episode, and he's documenting every step from the first episode covering his checklist, okay? And his checklist ties right into our topic, and that's part of why it's the perfect timing to tell you the story, and it's just perfect alignment with what he's doing and then how today's topic came about. So Patrick's first video is setting a checklist, and he is literally, you know, open on the video to, hey, hey, what should I do? You know, he's very open. He's taking everybody's suggestions and he knows some of the things that he needs to do. He takes everybody else's suggestion. He makes a checklist of what he needs to do. Okay. He set some financial goals in place. He then, you know, got the process started to start, get a logo because he identified he, you know, needed a logo that was on his checklist. He set up TintWiz on uh, season, episode five, which was last week because he identified that's going to be how he manages his business. And Patrick is, taking all the steps that he needs to do to set up his business. He has a goal in place and he knows his starting point and he is drawing the line, setting the roadmap, drawing the line with a clear timeline of how this is going to get accomplished and what he's going to accomplish. Okay. He's not going into this blind. He didn't just, you know, uh, go buy a bunch of tint. He didn't just uh, put some Craigslist at. He is saying, where am I now? Where do I want to go? How do I get from here to there? And it is absolutely the best thing in the world. <laughs> and I think it's the best thing in the world that he's sharing it with everybody. And what I'm really talking about is Patrick set himself a goal, okay? And he made the steps to reach his goal and he's following those steps to reach his goal. Now, I'll tell you what's going to happen with Patrick's window tinting business. He is going to blow past his goal and his expectation in a short amount of time. So his one-year goal will probably he'll hit in four or five months or six months. And the next year, he'll be further than he ever planned to be, the, you know, five years down the road and so on. And this is, you know, when, when you're doing things that way, this is the path and the start. But the, today's topic isn't just talking about how successful, successful Patrick's going to be. It's going to be a challenge that I think Patrick potentially faces now, definitely faces in the future, because I think we all face, but really it's something that, you know, I use Patrick as an example. Today's topic's not really about uh, Patrick. He was just kind of a, a perfect example. Um, but today's topic is really more something that I personally deal with. I do it on a, it's, it's something that I practice. It's something that I'm constantly trying to improve at and learning. So it's something that I feel like everybody can benefit and I wanted to share. So To put that in words, <laughs> that's that's the best part. So what that is, is I feel like we all have an image of ourselves. We have an image for what we want to achieve. We have an image for our goals. And we have kind of this rough idea of how long it should take to get there, okay? And when we're conscious of this, when we're not just going through the day-by-day -day in autopilot, getting the stuff done that we need to get done, but when we're actually conscious of these goals and we say, you know, I would like to, you know, be at X and X, uh, XYZ sales number in a year or in two years, or I would like to move into a bigger shop or whatnot, okay? When we have those goals in mind, we kind of attach a time frame. Okay. Sometimes we attach a time frame. Sometimes they just sit out there as goals. Sometimes we attach a time frame to them. Okay. We say, well, you know, these are the steps I need to take. I need to grow. I need to hire another person. I need to save up X amount of money. This is maybe it'll take a couple of years. So this is my two year goal. And you know, what we do is basically what I just described Patrick's doing is we, we, we know where we're at. We know where we want to go. We set kind of a rough timeline of how we want to accomplish it. And we fill in the blanks with our steps of how we're going to get there. Okay. The exercise that I feel we should all be doing and that I struggle with, but am getting better and better at is how often do you reevaluate those goals and reevaluate maybe your own self-imposed limits that you set in place? And by reevaluating those goals and reevaluating the timeline, could you accomplish your five-year goals in one year? Could you accomplish your one-year goal, your 2020 goal in one week? 
Can you set, hey, these are the top three things that I think would be beneficial for my business. And you know, if you think of those things as, well, they're so important, they're so big, I have to really wait until I have time for them. What ends up happening is those things that you first identify as the most important things end up becoming the last things you potentially do because you need the most amount of time dedicated to them. So what happens is when you have little bits of time, instead of focusing that little bits of time on knocking out the stuff that's going to get you to your goals and get you the biggest impact, you spend that time as useless time, not useless because you might learn things. And I learned things from Facebook and so on. But what I'm saying is you kind of, that time ends up going towards the checking out. It's the, okay, I have a few free moments. Let me go do this. And that might probably not be on your list of top three things that are most beneficial for your company or for your life. So, you know, to kind of summarize what I'm saying here is I think it's an important exercise. It's not something we're going to master at any point. I don't think anybody can truly master it because it's a growth. So I think as you grow, you have to kind of look around and say, well, what's the next best thing I need to do? What do I need? You know, what do I want? And, and those wants may not be more sales. They may not even be more money. They may be how to work less. They may be how to make more money in less amount of time. They may be to eliminate the most stressful parts of your business so that you can focus on the most um, exciting and rewarding parts of your business. So, you know, it is important to set goals. Now, when I say set goals, you have to set goals that actually excite you. Okay. So it's important that you set goals that are big enough that they're worth it. And they have to be goals that, you know, make you want to go for them. Because if your goals are mediocre, if your goals are not things that really like get you up and, and just excite you, they're not like, if they're not big enough, if they're not, in line with what really like you feel is rewarding, then if your goals aren't in place, you're not going to be very motivated to do the things that you need to do to accomplish your goals. Now, they're still your goals, so you might feel some guilt over them. So, you know, it's kind of this like self-sabotage potentially um, that kind of takes place when you might have just the wrong goals in place. So pick things that are big enough for you, pick things that are exciting for you, because when you have the right goals in place, uh, it becomes much more motivating to go ahead and do it. So I'm going to stop for a second and read Mike Powell's comment. He said, that's my issue. Growth this year has been amazing and booming. Now me not expecting to take off this quickly. Now I'm struggling to keep up and need reaching out for helping hands all the time. Employee, I never thought I would have needed, but now I kn know that is next. So Mike Powell, you, what you were talking about is, um, you know, obviously it's, it's a good problem to have and it's something that happens to everybody. So there's two ways to think about growth. Okay. You either want to, you know, put the things in place ahead of your growth to stick, pave the way, or you want to grow first and then try to put the pieces in place. So I, I, what comes to mind is almost like a train track. If you're, if you have a train and you're not sure how far that train's going to go, you can wait until the train runs off the rails. Then the train stops for a minute. You, you fix it. You put the railing in place, you get it back going and you wait again until it runs off the rails. Or you can risk it and you can say, well, I'm going to lay down some extra track. I'm pretty sure what direction the train's headed in and I'm going to keep this momentum going. So I'm going to lay the track ahead of my train so that I don't have to have the downtime because it's easier for me to lay track ahead of the train than to deal with the problems and the headaches that might come from the train running off the track. So an example, a real life tint example of the train running off the track is maybe you're booked out a month. Okay. If you're booked out a month, what's going to happen is you're going to be doing great. Customers are going to call you, whether it be for flat glass or automotive. And they're going to say, I'd like to bring my car in this weekend. You're, I'm booked out a month. You're booked out a month. You're crazy. I'm not waiting a month to get my car tinted. Have a good day. And that's not necessarily a bad, good experience for your customer. Now you want them to understand that you're booked out because your quality is great, but the efficiency of your business isn't necessarily great. So another example would be, you know, if, if you were to buy something and it was a great product, but they tell you that it's on back order for a year, is that necessarily a great experience for you? Like, yeah, it's a great product. That's why it's on back order. But don't you expect them to keep up with demand to be able to supply the service in a reasonable amount of time? So whether that's flat glass or automotive, you know, those are things to keep in mind. And it is easier to build ahead of, ahead of it a little bit, at least some sort of balance because sometimes you don't know what areas you're going to need to grow in. You know, just you don't know you need it until you need it sometimes. What I'm saying is it doesn't get easier. 
as you get more busy. So don't put off things you know you need to do as things you know you need to do when you get bigger because when you get bigger, you'll wish you did them to begin with. Your, um, if something is inefficient, by getting bigger, you're making that inefficiency greater. It has a bigger effect on your business and it becomes a larger hole to patch. So, Mike Powell, I mean, at the end of the day, you're growing and that's awesome. And, you know, strap yourself in for a ride because it's going to be a ride. It's going to um, be a rewarding ride because, and I, and I know that you're another person that I, I already know um, where you're headed as a level of success. I, I, you know, one of the qualities that Mike Powell possesses is this willingness to learn uh, as a sponge to absorb knowledge and just willingness to, to just try and, you know, willingness to try and being able to take good ideas and put them into action is, you know, 99% there. Like it's all about that action. So Chris Queen, what's up? Uh, thanks for joining. Chris Queen, another uh, incredibly growing shop. His video, um, if you don't know who Chris Queen is, or if you do and you haven't seen the live stream, or if you did and you want to watch it again, it's actually, I think, the still most watched video on our YouTube channel on TintWiz. So check it out. It's most live or it's most watched for a reason, I would imagine. So Chris Queen, uh, somebody with great, you know, great business practices, a uh, growing shop, a growing team putting out great work and you can just, you can see when you, when you see the shop, I mean, you, you get an idea of, of what you what people are doing right. So I have some notes on some other topics that I just kind of wanted to touch on today. And, um, you know, it's an ask me anything. So ask me anything and, uh, we'll keep going from here. So I'm going to go through these notes and uh, let's see. So one way to kind of look at your mentality, because it really is, like I said before, it's not a something that you're just going to master all at once or you're going to do right or wrong. It's kind of something that you need to constantly be reevaluating, I, I feel. And, you know, you, you kind of have to look at the things you're doing for your business and Kind of be aware of if you're doing these things because you're trying to avoid failure or if you're doing them because you're trying to seek success. So you could be doing the same thing. You could look into marketing. You can look into improving your customer service. And you can look into it from a way of these are the things I have to do to stay in business. Because if I don't do these things, you know, I'm, I'm going to lose business. Customers aren't going to be happy and so on. The other angle is you look at it as a way of, hey, I'm going to do these things because I want to seek a new level of success. I want to find out what happens when you go up and beyond. I want to take what people never expect out of a window tinting service and make this the best service they're going to interact with all year or in their life. I want to be the best person that my customer talks to and memorable. I want them to be, I want them to leave my business feeling cheerier and better about life. I mean, these are, I know these are kind of out there thoughts, but these, it's kind of a, it's, it's a different way to look at the things you're doing. Um, the way you set up your shop, the way you maintain your shop, the way you talk to customers, the way you respond to questions and so on. And, you know, don't feel like you have to answer questions just so that a customer, you know, makes their decision. Try to look at it from the point of view as you're trying to, you know, reach a new level. Um, so, that was one point that I, I had that I wanted to bring up. And, um, you know, the other one that this is, this really ties into the first point of today's Tint Wisdom. And it's kind of a, how do you see yourself? So we all have this vision of ourselves. And the vision is something that we've accumulated across the way throughout life. And then it's something that others around us reinforce. So, you know, if somebody... Starts call, if, you, if you tend to be organized and people start to tell you you're organized, it kind of reinforces this organizational like thought in your mind and you tend to lean towards being more organized. And if you, the same thing is if somebody tells you you're sloppy or if you start to feel like you're sloppier, you know, if you tell yourself like, like I'll, I'll give you one, I tell myself I don't like to write or read books. Now, me telling myself I don't like to read books has made sure that I don't read any books. If it's in book form, I don't read it. And I don't, have a problem with reading books. I read nonstop on the computer 24-7. Like I'm always reading. So 
how do I, how does somebody who enjoy, loves reading, is always reading, doesn't read books? And it's because my whole life I've told myself that I don't like reading books. Um, so the way this applies to window tinting is, you know, you have to reinforce the things that are going to benefit you. And one of those things that, you know, I just hear that I feel like has to be completely washed out of anybody's mind is I'm not a computer person. I'm not organized. I need to get organized. And I'm not, I'm not, by saying I'm not a computer person, you are putting up a wall, a boundary, and you're labeling something as hard. So in your mind, you framed it as a difficult task. Now, a difficult task is likely not going to be a fun task, and a difficult task is probably one you don't have a lot of time for if you're busy. So you've just taken something and put it in the I don't have time for because I'm busy category when you're probably in that sentence saying you know it's good for you, but you're not a computer person, or I know I need to get more organized when I have time and so on. And, you know, I just feel like you have to wash yourself of the ways you see yourself and start realizing that, you know, you, you are who you are based on like what you do today. It's not about really yesterday or the past. It's really about what you do today. It's not about what you want to do a year from now. It's what you're actually doing today, what you actually do tomorrow and so on. So, you know, get rid of any of those, I'm not a computer person. You know, if, if it came down to figuring out how to make a post on Facebook, somehow we all figured it out. If it, came, it comes down to, um, you know, if it comes down to betting on a sports site, somehow we figure it out or going through a news site or whatever it is, like, like we weren't all on phones 10 years ago navigating the internet, but we all figured it out. The same with, goes with the computer. Nobody was a computer person 35, 40 years ago, or there was very, very few. Nobody really was a computer person. We all figure it out. So, um, regardless of what you see, whether you think about it in the terms of a computer person as one example, or as I'm not a people person, or, you know, I'm not very patient, or I have a short temper. Those are things that you're telling yourself and kind of building an excuse for a narrative that, you know, fits the identity that you built up in your head. And those aren't real. Those are things that you can have significant improvement on. And, you know, uh, sometimes we talk about physical things you can do in a tin shop and, you know, uh, technological things you can do in a tin shop. These are mental things you can do in a tin shop that can change, uh, that can change the game. So Rhett said, I hated, oh, I hated, uh, stained French panes. And I assume something's about to change about that. So I'll wait the update, the next messages. So in summary, some things that the takeaway is from today's wisdom that I, I think are important is identity and identify. So you want to evaluate how do you look at yourself and what things are you telling yourself that, you know, you could just forget about. Those things aren't true. Um, the next one is, um, I, so your identity, identify, identify the things um, that are best for your business. Top three things. Then start to look at the task list that'll get you those top three things. So make a list, three things, the three things that you think your business can benefit most from, regardless of what those things are. Like that's something for you to know. Make sure you like them, make sure they excite you and make sure you really feel like they're the best things for your business. They're gonna have the biggest, best impact for you. And then once you identify those three things, make a list of what do you need to do to get there? That's all you gotta do is make the list. Don't, don't overcomplicate it. Just say, this is what I need to do. Pick a spot in between you now and where what the things you want to accomplish and start to fill in the blanks. To do this, I need to do this. To get that, I'll need to do that. And figure that roadmap out. And then go, how long do I really realistically need to get this done? And you may start off looking at something and go, wow, I thought this would take a year. I could do this in like two months. But then you might be able to look at it again and go, why two months? I could do this in a couple weeks. And then a couple weeks can turn into a week. And then as you're doing this as an exercise, you may realize that things that you thought of as so difficult and things that you put off for the future can be things that you can knock out in three or four minutes, five minutes. They're things that in your head seem like a big deal, but the actual time to do them and to get started only took a minute or two. So that's it. So Rhett said, I hate stained French panes. I didn't see a follow-up text, so I'm not sure, Rhett, if you still hate them or if you just used to hate them. Oh, he said I hate them, so I was thinking he used to hate them, but he currently hates them. So, Rhett, here's the deal. If you own your own business, okay, this is how you're going to love French, uh, stained French panes. Hopefully, you own your own business or somehow you're doing consultations and installations. Or if you don't own your own business, take this idea to your boss and 
I'm guaranteeing you will love stained French paints. So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out a number that makes a, a price that makes you love stained French paints. So you're going to figure out where a number, a dollar amount per pane, per square foot and per pane, because depending on the size of the panes and the square feet and so on, figure out a number. Okay. And you're going to say for that amount of money, I would love to do every single stained French pane that exists on this earth. Okay, so currently maybe you do French panes at $12 a pane, $10 a pane, maybe $15 a pane. Maybe you hate, okay, $20 a pane, 20. Is $20 a pane how much you would love to do it for or is that how much you're doing it now? I'm curious, Rhett. Because in my previous flat glass business, our go-to number for panes was 15 a pane. We just pretty much went to 15 a pane. That covered anything up to a high quality dye-free ceramic. And then if we were going with um, a, a specialty film that really fell out of that spectrum and go up to maybe 18 a pane or of course higher if it, if it warranted it. Okay. But the point being is if, if we were only charging 10 a pane, nobody would want to do panes. We would hate them. But if you're making a margin that's bigger on those panes than it is on the smaller ones, uh, I'm sorry, on bigger panes of windows, if that margin is there and that margin is important to you, um, there's going to be a point where you want more French panes. So what I'm saying is if, like he said, spectrally selective. So um, if you're doing a spectrally select at $20 a pane and you hate it, then what if you were to charge $30 a pane? Would you hate it at $30 a pane? And find a price that makes you love it. Because what could end up happening is you then become a specialist at it. You're going to love it. You're going to be enthusiastic about it because when you do sell those jobs, you're going to make a buttload of money. Okay. And then that's going to make you want to sell more pains. And then if you kind of follow that momentum, you take pictures of those projects, you show new customers that project, you market yourself as a small pain specialist. And you know, you focus on the detail that goes into it. And what will end up happening is nobody will have done more small pains than you. So you'll created yourself a whole persona and a whole business around small pains. And that will be more profitable than maybe doing a couple frosted windows in somebody's bathroom. And, you know, to me, that's a way that you can take something like small panes that you might say, well, I hate small panes. Then you go, well, why do I hate small panes? Because I feel like it's not worth, worth my time or because, or because another option could be, you could say, well, I don't want to do small panes. So I'm going to sub out. I'm going to hire somebody to work for my company per job basis. They'll wear my uniform. They'll go do the job. They're going to do the small pains. Anytime I get a small pain job, that person's going to do it. I'm going to have scheduled them to come do that small pain. And then that alleviates you of your small pain misery, turns small pains into something you make money off of without actually doing the labor and really leads. It's like a step into you growing your company because next thing you're going to have somebody that can also help you um, on other jobs that you may need additional employees for. So you know, that whole, I hate this part of the business, figure out why you hate it. Um, because if you hate it, because if you hate it, you have to figure it out because if you hate it enough, you either have to get rid of it as a business, as a part of your business, because maybe you hate it because it's a waste of your time, or maybe because you're not able to capture the money that you want for it, or maybe you're charging too low for it. There's some reason you hate it. And there's some move you can make to take control of that and turn that hate into something that moves along your business. Because you know, time's limited. Okay. This, you know, it's March. It's basically March, right? And March is basically a third of the year. And a third of the year is basically a quarter, like, you know, or I'm sorry, a quarter of the year. And that means that we only have three more of those to go and the year is over. And we only do that maybe another, I mean, depending on, on how old you are watching this, another maybe 30 to 50 times. And then this whole show is over. By show, I mean life. So, you know, something that has to be grasped is, you know, the, it's very limited. It's only per year. Okay. Um, like the years fly by and the months fly by, the, the days fly by, the weeks fly by, the years fly by. And at the end, there's going to be an end probably. It seems that way. So I really believe it's more fun to try and take control of the business you're in and take the risks you want to take and learn and progress and be in control and go for it, then, you know, just kind of have these goals that are your two year, your three year, your undefined goals that you hope happens one day. And, you know, one day is going to come and 
you might realize like I could have did this overnight. And sometimes there's triggers in your life that make that happen or opportunities that come in that make that happen. Or you can be your own trigger and you can make that happen. You can, you know, um, take control. So it's, it's really about self-awareness. Um, Rhett, thank you for bringing it up. The small pain thing, really. I, 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 I we, you know, it, it brought up another subject, which is evaluating the services that you offer. You have to not, you have to figure out, figure out your three, you know, your three goals and how you're going to get there. But another thing you can look at that's very easy is put on paper, figure out your profit margins, figure out the different films you sell, how much money you make on them and how much time it takes and figure out where your best effort is spent. And if you can knock out the bottom 20% or 30% of your effort, the, the stuff that's making you the least and taking you the most time, and you can reapply that time and effort into what makes you the most with the least amount of time or what brings you the most fulfillment or enjoyment, that's going to change your life. And once you do that, and then you realize how, you, how in control you are, and then you do that again and again and again, it becomes something that you... you you, you get, I think, an, like an addicted to because it's, it's this fulfilling feeling of being able to accomplish goals and be in control. So it's, it's taking control of the steering wheel instead of just kind of seeing where, you know, the car goes. So that's tonight's motivational tint whiz. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if there's any questions, whether you're watching this live or you're watching this after, please leave them in the comments. All of these Tint Wisdoms go up on YouTube afterwards, so that's a great place to catch up on old Tint Wisdoms or rewatch them because they're all organized in order in one place. They also go on iTunes, on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud. That's a way you can listen to them without watching. So, you know, uh, if... Uh, and I'm open, always open to any topic ideas. If you need any support, you'll find us in the live chat. Live chat is run by myself and other team members. Everybody knows the app inside and out. Everybody's been in the tint industry for five plus years, uh, some with 10 plus years experience. We know what we're doing, not just in the app. We know what we're doing in the tint industry. So use the live chat support that we monitor almost 24 hours a day as a resource, as a place that you can reach out, as a place that you can get a fast, accurate answer to however you need help. It's uh, right there and use it. And uh, we'll be back on Thursday. Um, this Thursday is going to be Carlos, the Texas Tint Master. And Carlos is a freaking awesome guy. Um, Jason uh, is part of the, the – Carlos and Jason um, and Billy that uh, was, you know, just commented a little earlier in the live stream, part of the Tinter Tour, uh, T-I-N-T apostrophe E-R Tour. And the Tinter Tour is freaking awesome. Carlos is going to talk more about it. Jason talked about it on uh, – wisdom a couple weeks ago or last week, I think last Thursday. And, um, and yeah, I'm excited to have Carlos on. Carlos has been working on this intro for the beginning of next week's Tint Wisdom. I love it. I'm excited about it. It just makes me smile and I can't wait for it. And um, Carlos brings a whole level of enthusiasm. You know, he brings this knowledge. He's clearly a knowledgeable tinter, knowledgeable entrepreneur. And he brings this momentum and this oomph and this lighthearted, like comedic factor that uh, I just love. It just, it's a different angle. It's uh, very lighthearted and fun. And I love what he's doing. And I'm excited to have him on here on Thursday. And I highly recommend you catch it live because I think the intro is going to be worth watching live. I think he's a great person to ask some questions. And um, he mentioned to him, he had some questions for me. So, yeah, that's going to be next Thursday. And I think that's it. So we'll wrap this up, folks. Thank you for watching. We'll see you Thursday, Facebook, Tintwiz page, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And uh, look forward to it. Bye-bye.